Assalamu alaikum. Uh, today we're going to start the, a new topic. And I think I already sent you the, 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 the title of our topic. Uh, we're going to start with literary devices. Okay. Uh, and it's going to be fun, you know, because it's going to be literature and translation. And personally, I love literature. I was originally, or I, I originally graduated from uh, the Faculty of, of Arts. So literature is my thing. And we're going to, we're not going today to start talking about the translation of literary devices. Today we're going to explain the main literary devices that we're going to uh, be looking at. Uh, today we're going to explain them, define them, have some examples. We're not going to start with their translations. Next time we're going to, like, I don't think we're going to have enough time to do all of the devices today. So next time we're going to move forward with the devices. And I think that maybe next time or the time after it, we'll start with the strategies that we use when we translate <clears throat> literary devices. Someone might ask, why do we have all these strategies for every different topic, like aren't the first uh, strategies that we learned when we first started enough? I always tell you that and I always repeat it because it's very important. Translation is about the decisions you make and you don't make the same decisions when you translate a literary text, uh, even like across literary texts, you don't make the same decision. So it only makes sense that if you're working from one genre to the other or from one topic to another, that you would be using different strategies, okay? It, it makes sense. You wouldn't be using the same key to open all doors, right? Each door has its own key. So some strategies may sound similar, may look similar, but it depends on where you use it, how you use it, and most importantly, why you use it. That's why I always like think, or, or I always ask you to explain to me why you use a particular key to open a particular door. Why did you use this strategy to, to translate this uh, topic, for instance? Okay. We, the main, like we're going to have main literary devices and then sub literary devices because the main ones are like, let's say they're common, difficult to handle. Uh, like, and I want you to, 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 to realize the difference between literary devices and literary texts. Okay, so literary devices are different from literary texts. A literary text can be a poem, can be a story, can be a novel, can be a play. Those are the literary texts, okay, or genres. But the literary devices, they are more particular. They are related directly to the language that we're using, the imagery that we're using, the play on words that we're using. The first one is my all-time favorite, Antinoclasis. So what is Antinoclasis? Can someone read the slide, please? Can I? Yes, I have. It is, a, it is the repetition of a similar word in a sentence with different meanings, or a word is uh, repeated in two or more different sentences. Senses, excellent. So let's explain that. Basically, Senses. we have repetition. So it's said more than once. The word is said more than once in the text or in the sentence. But every time it's used, it means something different. Let's listen, like, let's have uh, an example before we begin the actual examples. Sabah al khair, sabah al nur ya nur. So, sabah al nur al ula nur is the response to sabah al khair, right? Good morning. But the second nur was actually me, nur. Now, when I translate this, it 
the, the antenna classes that was in the source text will probably be missing in, in, in target text because I'm going to reply to good morning with good morning. And then I'm going to say good morning, Noor. So again, good morning, Noor is telling Sarah good morning. Sarah says good morning, Noor. So here there is no antenna classes in the target text. But in the source text, it was sabah al khair. She could have said sabah al khair, but instead she said sabah al nur, ya nur. She could have also said sabah al ward, sabah al yasmin. Now, if she's talking to a girl whose name is ward or yasmin, she would be like sabah al ward, ya ward, sabah al yasmin, ya yasmin. So this is antenna classes. You're using the same word twice, but they have different meanings. And should I keep antenna classes in the target text or not? That's a question we're going to answer later on. But you should always remember what we learned before. If you lose something in the source text, there has, and, and it's important to the source text, you have to compensate for it in the target text, okay? Let's see examples in English. Viola. Say the friend and thy music in, in, in Shakespearean English. The means you, thy, your. Dost thou, do you, live by thy tabor? Okay? Do you live by your tabor? Save you, friend, and your music. Do you live by your tabor? So the clown says, no, sir, I live by the church. So the, the, the antenna classes here is live by, and in both sentences, they mean different, two different things. So like I said, here we have uh, live by and live by. So both of them mean different things. Can someone guess what the first meaning is and what the second meaning is? Hmm? So what are the differences? Like live by, the first live by has a meaning. The second live by has another meaning. So what are the two intended meanings? Anyone? Should I just answer? Okay, so live by the first one, it's more like you make a living, okay? So you make a living by your tabor, by playing your tabor. Tabor is a, an instrument, a musical instrument. So the first one, she asks him, is this how you make your living? Is this what you do for a living? And he says, no, I live by the church. So here he changed the the, the context or he changed the meaning of live by to the to, to, to indicate his actual location. I live by the church. So someone might ask me, do you live by teaching? I say, no, I live by the mosque or I live by the mall or I live by uh, uh, the park. Is this clear? Now, if you translate this into Arabic, you're going to ask yourself a question. How am I going to translate the antenna classes here? Okay. All these questions will be answered in the coming lecture or the one that follows it. Ah, he strikes all things all alike, but bargains those he will not strike. This is the most obvious use of antenna classes because, and it's easily understood because the only thing he does is that he adds not. Okay, so when you negate it, you're using the same word, but you mean a total, like the opposite. So if I say, la tansa, uh, uh, hiya tansa, hiya tansa, what does she forget? Hiya tansa, uh, al baba maftuhan. And then, hiya la tansa, kurrasataha. So tansa, the first one means forget. But tensa, the second one, means uh, remember. She doesn't forget. So this is 
the most basic form of anthanaclasis when you just negate the word. So there's no much thought to it. You just use the word and then la or not. And then you add the word again to give the opposite of that word. So that's not problematic, it's easy. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep, and miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. So in this poem, Frost repeats, I sleep and I sleep, but does the first sleep mean second sleep or not? That's the question. So no, the answer is no, they're not the same. The first sleep, means uh, to sleep, the actual sleep. But the second one means to die. I think there was another poem by Shakespeare, the sonnet, what was it? No, not by Shakespeare, by John Donne, I think. One short it's sleep fast and you live eternally or eternity, something like that. Uh, again, Sleep is, 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 is commonly, um, it's commonly known to, to, indicate, uh, to, indi to indicate death. So here the first one was the actual going to bed or actual sleep, but the second one was death. Now, I think in Arabic, ah, uh, yes, in Hamlet, yeah, true, true, to die, to sleep. Yeah, good, so it's handed, yes. Okay, so to sleep, um, again, can mean two things, the actual sleeping or death. In Arabic, I think we use the word noun to indicate death as well, uh, right? We do, right? So it's like, uh, to indicate that he died. So this can be, I think, Sometimes when, when like the source culture and the target culture share these um, general, let's say, terms or general senses of words, it gets easier to translate them because it's, a, it's the same thing in Arabic or in whatever target language we have. Al-Jinas. <clears throat> Al-Jinas is antenna classes, but obviously is in Arabic. So basically I'm going to repeat the same thing with minor changes. You know, because in Arabic, Iljinas is not exactly like, or it is exactly like English uh, antenna classes. Iljinas al lovely wa an al fi hayatihim. So the two words should have the same form, same word, the same letters. Wa yakun imma kamilan al naqisan. The love the kamil wa an yakun al lovdam they have, like if it is complete, if it is full, they have the same letters. So the, the, the rule is they have to have the same letters, the same arrangement of letters and the same uh, harakat. What's harakat in English? Movements? <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, so it's not movement, it's, um, I don't know, I can't remember the linguistic word for it. So, if it's not complete, if it's incomplete, it's not having the same letters, not having the same arrangement, and not having the same harakat, or whatever it's called in the target text, or in target language. Okay, فَهَيَّجَ هَذَا الْجَوَابُ it's easy here, right? So where is the genus here? Where is the genus? Good. What's the difference? Is this genus camel or not? Camel. Same thing. Now, am I going to ask you on a test? to tell me the literary device and tell me what type it is. Uh, I'm not going to ask you whether it is genastam or naqis, but I might ask you which literary device did you translate and what was the, uh, the, the, the strategy you used. So here, I, I'm not going to be asking you 
about the name of the literary device, but I want you to tell me where it is. So if I say, what's the literary device here? Don't tell me it's antenna classes or genus. Tell me it is hazama, hazama. Again, if I ask you about the, um, uh, the, the literary device in the source text and what strategies you're using in the translation or you used in the translation, don't tell me that it is antenna classes. Tell me that it is this item and this item. Hazamat, hazamat. Okay. Okay. So what's the difference in meaning? Hazamat ma ma bayna hajibayha. So she's like she crossed her eyes, right? Hazamat amraha. It's like it was final. She made a final decision. Cool. اختلاف النهار والليل ينسي قرا للصبا وأيام أنسي. So where is the literary device here? Yunsi wa unsi. And is it complete or partial? Partial. 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 Oh, good. Okay. What's the function of antenna classes? Why are we learning the function of antenna classes? We learn the function of antenna classes because as a translator, you need to identify which items that deserve you know, being compensated for and which devices don't need or, or don't require compensation. So we learn the function in order to be able to decide whether I have to, um, you know, compensate for this or not. Like when we said, sabah al khair, sabah al nur, ya nur. What's the function of the repetition here? Did the person who said this mean anything? Is it essential to the text? Is it important to the text? Was it a, co a coincidence? Maybe she just said Sabah and or it was just like, you know, unintended. So these uh, functions help us determine whether this literary item should be uh, translated or not. Usually literary items are, are essential to the text and usually other things later on in the text depend on them. So usually they're not random. Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, the example is you might be uh, reading a story or a novel. And in the beginning of the novel, someone says something, whatever that thing is. And then later on, someone uses this uh, word or this sentence to make fun of them or to refer to them in a joke. And we do this in daily life. Like for example, حاجة هيك بتصير بيننا فبنروح إيش إحنا مثلاً بعد ثلاثة أيام أربعة أيام بروح بستخدم الشغلة اللي صارت أو اللي انحكت في سياق ثاني عشان يعني لا تضحك لا كذا. So in in stories and novels, actions, words, uh, uh, dialogues, they are all connected. So what happens at the beginning can very much be related to what happens at the end. So if you omit something in the beginning and you decide that no, it's not going to be of importance in the text, it doesn't require compensation. And then five, 10, 20 pages later, you discover that they are again referring to that omitted part in a text. In 1984, for example, it happens a lot that, and, and it makes the target text sound stupid because the, the translation omits or the translator omits a particular thing in the, in the beginning of, of the book. And then towards the end, there are so many events that relate to that uh, omitted item. So as a reader of the target text, it doesn't make sense. I don't understand what's, what the author is trying to say here. Uh, in, the, in the source text, however, you can easily link the beginning to the end. You can easily understand the connection between the first few parts or the first few chapters with the final chapters. So this is very sensitive and important. Whenever you decide to omit and not compensate, you should always be aware of what you omitted and keep it in mind so that later on while translating, you would remember what you omitted and you would see if, it, if, if you should go back and add it again or compensate for it again, okay? Now, function of antenna classes, it gives an exciting contrast with different meanings of the same word. So sometimes that, like, uh, for example, uh, 
they're, they're not the same. So this contrast, again, may be of importance to the text. It also enhances the dramatic and persuasive impact of a piece of writing or speech, true, creates comic effect when used in the form of irony and pun. And does this like a question you might ask, what's the difference between antenna classes and puns? And we're going to get to that in a minute, okay? And I want you to, the, one of the reasons why I would never ask you to tell me what the literary device is, it's because they sound similar and they feel similar. They're not similar, they're not the same, but to a person who is not, let's say, um, aware of literature, for, for a person who doesn't read a lot, for a person who's not specialized in literature, it might be difficult to, 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 to distinguish antenna classes from puns, from jokes, and so on. So I don't need you to tell me what the literary device is, but you have to be able to, um, to, to, to identify that this is a literary device. Antenna classes, it's not a part of a pun. It's, it's hard to, like, it can be a pun, yeah. It can be a pun, but it can also not be a pun. Remember how we said we have partial antenna classes? Partial antenna classes is not a pun. That's why I tell you that there is a difference between the two. If it is uh, like genus tam, can be a pun, still can be a pun. But if it is partial antenna classes, then not really, it's, it's, not, it's not a pun. And we'll explain this later when we get to the pun. So don't worry about that. Okay. So uh, it makes the literary text memorable due to repetition, makes sense. It's used as a rhetorical device in poetry, prose, and political speeches. Sometimes political leaders make use of this technique in order to persuade and draw the attention of their audiences. And it can also be used like on a daily basis with your friends and family. You say something and you're like, you mean an entirely uh, different thing. And you would notice this in Egyptian uh, dialogues. Egyptians use this a lot. Al-Ifihat, you know, they use this a lot. Uh, al if can, can actually be more of a pun, but sometimes, you know, they say a word and they mean the entirely different thing and put them together in the same sentence, okay? The main difference between a pun and... Um, and the main difference between a pun and antenna classes is that antenna classes, you have to have the repetition. With puns, you don't usually have a repetition. You might have a repetition, you know, it can be repeated, but usually it's um, it's it's the repetition of, of the same. Yeah, like what Amani just sent, exactly. Puns, is there any question about antenna classes? Or Ginas, do you have any questions before we move to puns? Any any questions? No? Okay. So a pun is again a literary device that's also known as a play on words. And by a play on words, we mean the word itself is the is is the essence of of uh, but but it in the different context. Yeah. So basically, it's the item that we focus on, the word, how we say the word, what we do with the word. They involve words with similar or identical sounds, but with different meanings. Uh, it relies on a word or a phrase having more than one meaning. And puns are generally intended to be humorous, but they often have a serious purpose as well as in literary works. So let's have an example. Now, we're attending a lecture and the lecture is about finances or managing finances. Finances, like, you know, or, or money or something that relates to money. And we have, in English, we know that there is something that is called common sense. What's the meaning of common sense? What's common sense? Hmm. 
What's common sense? Yeah, raise your hands. What's common sense? No, that's not al hawas. Senses are al hawas. But what's common sense? I'll write it down for you. Common. No, no, no. Not what's written. Common sense. What's common sense? Common sense. Not what's written. I'm talking about common sense. Al-Fitra, yeah, good. So it's Al-Fitra Salim, Al-Tafkir Salim. It could be Al-Mantiq Salim. So common sense is established in English language. Common sense is established in English language. And here we have a lecturer who wants to be funny, who wants to attract his uh, audience or his um, students. So the lecturer goes and calls the um, the lecture common sense so it sounds like common sense but it's written common sense cent is a cent like dollar cent you know so shekel uh, pence so cent here is 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 related to finances it's related to money but common sense sounds like common sense that exists in the language let's see um, let's see what it means. So the play on words is between sense as in coins and sense as in awareness. This pun is also effective as a play on words of the phrase common sense, which is appropriate to the subject of managing finances. Because you need, like, if you're if you're dealing with money, you need to have your own common sense, like you need to follow common sense. Don't waste your money, don't uh, buy expensive things. So you need your common sense when it comes to that, okay? Now, what happens here is that you want to translate this into Arabic, it would be difficult to translate literally here. The strategy of literal translation will definitely not work here. So you might, and we're going to discuss this in translation of literary devices, you might even have to use an entirely different title, something entirely different, but gives the same, not meaning, but the same response of the audience or the students. Why? Because the person who did it, did it for the purpose of attracting the students' attention, for making them aware of the, the topic through a um, funny uh, title. So what you do is that you need to create the same response that the source audience had in the target audience, okay? Uh, like I said, today we're just going to present the literary devices and how to translate them will be uh, explained in further detail later. So if you feel like I'm in a hurry, because this is only to establish the basics of our work, but then the actual work will be explained in a slower tone and in a much clearer way. Her cat is near the computer to keep an eye on the mouse. I think this one is an easy one. So where's the pun here? Where's the pun? Where's the pun? Come on, guys, where's the pun? Her cat is near the computer to keep an eye on the mouse. Yes, Sirin. The mouse? Yeah. Al -fa you know, the fa'ra ta'at al laptop or computer, Afwan? Yes. 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 Yeah. yes. So, why is it funny here? Because there is a connection between cats and actual mice. So here it's funny because the cat that usually uh, uh, chases down mice is sitting near the laptop or the computer and is looking at the mouse, which is the object that we use to scroll on our computer. The cyclist 
was too tired to win the race. Where is the fun here? Hmm. Race? No. What's a cyclist? What's a cyclist? What's a cyclist? الدراج اللي بيمشي على الدراجة اللي هو البسكليت اللي بيسوق البسكليتة. Hmm. Too tired, yeah. Too. Too yes, tired. Correct. Too. So it's funny here because too means like the actual uh, way of writing it is too, right? It should be too. I know, double O. Was too tired to win the race. But here he wrote or the person who did it for a, like it, it's funny just to sound funny you know two with w and there is a connection between two and cyclist because cyclists ride bicycles that have two tires right makes sense so here the cat and the and the mouse have a connection in real life cyclist had like rides a bicycle that has two tires you know and remember two tired, tired tires, right? What's the meaning of tired? What's the meaning of tired? Maybe exhausted or agile. Exactly, thank you, Noor. Bizzabit. Tired, here it means because tired here, the, 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 the meaning of the sentence is clear, but the way it's written, you know, makes the pun. So there are no two different ways of understanding it because of the structure, but because of the way it is written, you know, to create that comic effect. So the cyclist was too tired to win the race, tire and two, uh, instead of two tires, you know, ajalen, too tired, exhausted, okay? Hmm. Can someone read number three and tell me? Or you have a minute. قبل ما أحول على ال الرابط الجديد معكوا دقيقة واحد يعني ثلاثة أربعة خمسة تشوفوهم وتقولوا لي إيش ال ال الفن تمام وإيش المعنى. الإجابة حتكون في الرابط اللي بعده إن شاء الله. اكتبوهم على السريع قبل ما يفصل او يعني يشوفوهم <تصفيق> 